Good evening. Welcome, everybody. We're reconvening an open session. Um, right now, we are on 6.8, so would you all please stand for the flag salute. And Mr. Mitchell, will you lead us? Place your right hand over your heart. Ready, begin. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, Thank you. Okay, on item 7.1 is a report out of closed session. We have nothing to report, so we are going to begin tonight with our report from our superintendent, Mrs. Mays Kakish. waiting for um, our presentation to come up. Good evening, everyone. Thank you for making the time to be at our board meeting. Um, are you able to? Okay, thank you. So one of the things I would like to start with, um, I've received several emails along with our board regarding a message that was sent by um, an unknown to our community. Um, and we took a picture of the, of the message that said, hi, I'm Felipe with Safe Beaumont Schools. Um, and then it went on to advocate. I just wanted to make sure that everyone knows that Beaumont Unified is committed to protecting the private information of our families and employees. And we did not release any personal information for public use. This information was obtained independent of Beaumont Unified. Um, and it's not affiliated or endorsed by Beaumont Unified. So we just wanted to make sure. We sent a message uh, a month ago, I think, regarding this because of a different message that went out. So we continue to receive emails. We'll answer those emails with the same, um, same information. Um, we also are receiving a lot of advocacy for including rapid testing in our district. And so I wanted to touch base on that and, and wanted to highlight that uh, the PCR test is still the golden standard for testing. It's the most accurate, uh, and it's also required by our county health for return to school, whether it's a staff member, whether it's a student. Um, if we would to have anyone out on quarantine because they're close contact or they've been um, affected, to come back to school, we have to submit a PCR testing. So, um, so that's one of the reasons that we don't endorse rapid testing. Besides the fact that rapid testing is not accurate, it's only 100% accurate at the peak of the infection. And so that's after you show symptoms and you go through the whole thing, that's when it's 100% accurate. Other than that, it's, it could have a false negative or a false positive. And so for us, working with our contractor to make sure that any test, which we've provided that at every single site in our district, any test that's submitted by 12 o'clock will be returned to us by the end of the day that day. If it's sub if submitted in that kiosk after 12 o'clock, it'll be uh, back to us in 24 hours, less than 24 hours, so it's the next day. So um, we are receiving results quickly. We're acting on it quickly and informing our uh, respective uh, relevant stakeholders uh, as fast as we can. So I just wanted to make sure that everyone has that information too because of the requirements for the PCR test. We, um, we don't waste our time on rapid testing. Um, just wanted to inform our board that we also had the opportunity to present at the Beaumont Cherry Valley Rotary Luncheon. It was um, a great opportunity for us to highlight the district and the programs that we have in the district. We've also um, were able to kind of update them on where the district is, how many employees we have, the programs that we offer, and the jewels that we have in all of our school sites. So it was a great, great event, and thank them for hosting us. And we had a successful start for our production, Annie, at the high school. And big congratulations to the cast and the whole crew from Beaumont Unified School District. Um, they had a sold out event so far and they still have few next weekend. 
And this is a theater, uh, the theater's department first in two years as far as an event to have in person. So um, we're so excited about that. And we wanna thank Mr. and Mrs. Hashfield for always doing such an amazing job with our theater students. Um, they have three shows left, the 12th, the 13th, and the 14th of November. If you wanna catch them, uh, please go to our website on beaumont.us, usd.us. And one uh, great highlight that we would like to market is the fact that now that we're almost fully, fully back in person in um, all of our programs, we would like to make sure that we fill our seat for the student board member. So we are calling for all Beaumont juniors and seniors. Um, if you're interested to becoming the next student board member for the next semester, uh, please fill out the application. We're accepting applications right now. Uh, also on our website, and it's, um, if you have any questions, please contact our uh, public information officer, Francine Zabata, or go on our website and you'll, you'll be able to contact us. And we're excited to fill that seat that's been vacant for a while now, almost mm -hmm. two years too. Good point. And that is my report, thank you. Thank you. All right, moving on to item 8.1, which is public testimony. Uh, during meetings of the Board of Trustees, members of the public have an opportunity to comment or on items that appear or do not appear on the agenda. Individual speakers shall be allowed tonight two minutes because of the amount of speakers we have. Um, with, uh, let's see, so we are going to limit the total time for speaking from 20 minutes to 30 minutes on each topic. So um, we are going to begin. Uh, our first speaker would be Karen Hoshield. All right. I'm here to invite you all personally to come and see the Annie production. Uh, this weekend, it was sold out. The kids are doing an amazing job. We basically have all new tech students running the show. Um, almost all the actors are brand new. Um, and uh, Mr. Barnett came and spoke with them, and we appreciate him reaching out to the students. They really enjoyed that. And thank you, Mr. Hovey, for coming and seeing Annie yet again in our district. Um, but uh, basically, I didn't realize you were going to plug it. So, <laughs> so thank you for letting me speak. And um, it is a great show, and I invite everyone um, to come and see it. And the students are doing it with full masks. And after the first five minutes, you you don't even you see past the masks. They're doing such an amazing job. So um, thank you, and I'll see you this weekend at the show. Thank you. Thank you. Jeff. Um, <laughs> as, as mentioned, I did have the opportunity to go uh, Saturday. It, it is a wonderful production. Uh, the students do a great job, and it was a full house. So uh, if, if you're interested in going, uh, get your tickets. You'll enjoy it. Okay, we are now going to go on to uh, more public comments. Um, so we are going to limit the time 30 minutes. I didn't say this, 30 minutes for each topic. And we are going to alternate between comments here and comments that we received via email. So we are taking them in the order that they were received. So we will begin um, for this topic for state regulations and mandates to Daisy Walling is going to begin. Good evening. My name is Daisy Walling. I'm a mother of four. Sometimes I'm a caretaker of six, sometimes 92, sometimes more. All of which are enrolled here at the Beaumont Unified School District. I volunteer a lot of my time in a number of programs in our community. I spend countless of hours directly engaging with these children in our district. I've seen them reach triumphs and victories from challenging and physical activities, abilities, from adjusting their diet, from adjusting their mindsets, from I can't do it to I did it. I've seen firsthand what a significant toll these restrictions 
these mandates and these regulations are taking on all these children. Not only physically, but psychologically, but also spiritually. The damage that's already been caused really is beyond repair. I say enough. Let them breathe. Let them be. Please stand up to the state. Please hold the line with us. Oppose the vaccine mandate for our children. <coughs> if allowed, I'd like to yield my remaining time to the next individual with opposing views. Thank you. This next comment comes from Melissa Muller. Hello, I am writing because I am really hoping that our district does not mandate the vaccine for our students. This vaccine is for emergency use and my children will not be an experiment. I would like the board to consider our resolution to be put on the next agenda. We will support and defend the board members if they stand up to the state to protect our children. Please do everything in your power to keep this vaccine a parent's choice. Our kids want to be in school and the only way for that to happen is to not this not to make this a mandate. Thank you, Melissa Muller. Okay, our next speaker is Chris Galarza. Good evening. Uh, my name is Christopher Galarza, and I have a child who currently attends Beaumont Unified uh, School District, and I'm also involved in the community uh, through youth sports. I initially planned on taking aim at one of your board members, but decided to change course. Today wasn't a day, and I will be brief. What the definition of bravery? It means courageous behavior or character. Let me give you an example of, of, of bravery. My son goes to school every single day without a mask, knowing that people, adults, teachers, administrations, uh, may look at him strange, and knowing that uh, his peers may peer pressure him to try to wear a mask. Um, hell, even the principal at Summerwind called him a liar and questioned our parenting. He still walks in school with his head held high. We could learn from him and other kids experiencing, experiencing this on a daily basis. That's bravery and that's courage. You know what, who else is brave and has displayed courage? Marietta, Apple Valley, Hesperia, Rim of the World, Hammond Unified. These are a few school districts in Southern California that draft a resolution um, opposing mandates and giving power back to the parents. I'm asking Beaumont Unified School District to consider our resolution to be put on the next agenda. Uh, we will support and defend each board member that, that stands, up for, stands up with us uh, to, protect the, uh, to protect our children. Thank you for allowing, us, allowing me to speak. Thank you. This comment comes from Holly N. Hello, we've been part of the Beaumont Unified School District since 2007 when my oldest entered kindergarten and graduated from Beaumont High in 2020. I currently have two children in the district, one at Beaumont High and one in elementary. I'm an active member of PTA and we love our schools. I'm firmly, firmly against the mandate that requires anyone to be vaccinated with the COVID-19 vaccine. I believe it should be everyone's personal choice. I ask that you let parents make the decision for what is right for their own children and not enforce this mandate. If you choose to support this mandate, both of my children will be pulled from the district in an instant. I would like to ask that you do not force the va this vaccine on our children. Let every parent make the choice that is best for, uh, for them. I would also like to ask you to not force any teachers or staff to get this vaccine or risk losing their job. Our teachers are the hardest working teachers around and they deserve to be able to make the choice for themselves. Please support, us like, uh, please support us like my family and many others have always supported our Beaumont schools. Thank you, Holly Neary. Thank you. Okay, Rebecca Barbie. Good evening, board members. I'm the uh, mother of the wonderful polo, water polo player that was up here speaking to you the last couple of weeks. I wanted to give you a little bit of background about him. He decided, my husband and I decided <coughs> to move to Beaumont specifically for the school district. 
We chose to commute an hour to our jobs every day just so that we could put Nick in this district. In fourth grade with Mr. Zubinick, he wanted to go into aviation. In sixth grade with Mr. Hino, he wanted to be an engineer. And now his goal is to, be, uh, to go into the Air Force Academy. He's in the ROTC, and that's where his goal is, and he's working hard um, to reach that goal. Um, I hope that you won't take that away from him. I hope that you will allow him to continue to thrive in your school district. Um, and if you make him get vaccinated, that's not gonna happen. You said a week ago that, or a couple weeks ago, that the governor, you can't stand up to the governor or the mandates. I have a list of 17 school districts that have stood up to the governor. I ask that you would please pass the resolution to oppose the state mandate. Thank you. This next comment is from Liza Haynes. Hello, my name is Liza Haynes. I would like the board to consider our resolution to be put on the next agenda. We will support and defend the board members if they stand up to the state to protect our children. In addition, please pass the resolution to oppose state vaccine mandate for our children. Please stand up to the state and stand with us parents. My child, my choice. Thank you for your time. <laughs> Heather Rayleigh. Good evening, trustees. My name is Heather Raley. I'm a mother of three, two of which attend Beaumont USD. And tonight, I'm calling on our school board to consider passing our resolution to oppose the state mask and vaccine mandates. Please stand up to the state and stand up with us, and we will stand up with you to protect our children. Thank you. Thank you. This message is from Terry Witten. Please consider the resolution submitted by Heather Rayleigh. There is no harm in allowing parents to choose to vaccinate or not for COVID-19. There may be harm in forcing an untried vaccine to be given to children. The New, the New York Times 10-21 or 10-12-21 even printed an article stating, quote, an unvaccinated child is less risk, is at less risk than a vaccinated 70-year-old, end quote. They showed the data proving that children have an infection rate of 0.007%. Just last week, the CDC gave data that only 150 children have died from COVID in the entire pandemic. I recognize that those 150 deaths are tragic, but more children die from bicycle accidents. A resolution would show your support of uh, parent choice and join a growing number of California school districts sending this message to Sacramento. Thank you, Terry Witten, grandparent, voter, retired educator. Thank you. Danielle Juarez. Sorry, I was actually dressed for football tonight. I've decided okay. to come tonight. So, um, well, my name is Danielle, and um, I have three kids. One has already graduated the high school here, well, through the, through the district here, and uh, I have two other ones, one at high school and one at San G. But I do want to leave just a little bit of information. One, can you please advise me of the approval legal status of any vaccines and if it's experimental. Can you please advise me the details and assurance that this vaccine has been fully independently and rigorously tested against controlled groups as subsequent outcomes of these tests? Can you please advise me of all the adverse reactions associated with this vaccine since its introduction? Can you please advise of the full list of contents of the vaccine and I re if, I'm re if my children have received it if there's any toxic in that body, in their body. Can you please confirm that the vaccine you're advocating is not experimental mRNA gene altering therapy? And I wanted to leave this too on the openvares.com. Out of 856,917 reports, we have 18,078 deaths, 88,910 hospitalizations, 95,000 954 urgent cares, 133,973 doctor visits, 7,844 anthropolistics, 10,721 bell palsies, 2,786 miscarriages, 8,878 heart attacks, 
11,449 myocarditis and 28,112 permanently disabled. You guys, this is real numbers. We said the Pledge of Allegiance to the Republic for which we stand. We teach our kids our amendments. Thank you. Please, thank you. This next comment is from Carrie Skaggs. Dear board, I am opposed to the vaccine mandates for children of all ages. It should be the parents' decisions about what to do with their children. Please consider a resolution to oppose the vaccine mandates and stick up for your district. Thank you, Carrie Jackson. Okay, Adriana, is it Beltre? Good evening, my name is Adriana Veltri. I urge you to not consent to the unconstitutional mandate that is being forced on our children and staff. I call the shots for my children, not the government. Thank you. This is from Lisa Jennings. My name is Lisa. I would like the board to please pass the resolution to oppose the state uh, vaccine mandate for our children. Please stand up to the state and stand up, uh, stand with us parents. My child, my choice, our community, our voice. Thank you, Lisa Jennings. Okay, I'm sorry, I'm having a hard time seeing and un understanding this name. So I think the last name is Erickson. No. Okay, Steve. Oh, okay. What is it? Casey. Casey. Okay, thank you. Hi, guys. So I'm here, excuse me, I'm here to speak on behalf of the recent COVID-19 vaccine mandate that has been required in order for my children to attend public school. It's not always easy to stand against adversity, but we cannot serve two masters. We must stand up to the state when we know something is not right. I have been entrusted by God to make sure my children are safe, clothed, and fed. You trust that I bring my kids to school on time with adequate amount of sleep and food in their bellies. It's my responsibility to do my research when the government wants to inject a foreign substance into their bodies in order to continue to come to school. Nobody will be here to pick up the pieces if they succumb to the long list of side effects from these drugs, but me. If this vaccine is so safe, why don't these companies assume liability when something goes wrong? My oldest son stood up here last time and expressed what a failure distance learning was. We don't want that for our kids. So I'm asking for you to consider our resolution to be put on the next agenda. We will support and defend you if you stand up to the state to protect our children. There is power in numbers. Please do what's right by the majority of these parents here. Thank you. This next comment is from Patricia Hernandez. Hello, my name is Patricia Hernandez. Both of my sons attend BUSD schools here in Beaumont. I disagree with the state's mandate vaccine. Please pass the resolution to oppose the state vaccine mandated for our children. Please stand up to the state and stand with us parents. My child, my choice. Parent Patricia Hernandez, I'm BMS mom. Thank you. Christine Stride. Good evening. I just wanted to come and vocalize my opposition in the state mandate. Our children are too vulnerable to be subjected to things that we, we don't know. One thing that we do know though is there's a ton of parental support here. The parents will stand behind you guys 
if you guys oppose this with the state, we cannot risk our children being damaged any more than they are. And I yield my time. Thank you. This is from Marcella Zamora. Hi, my name is Marcella, I'm sorry, Marcella Acosta. My, my name is Ar <laughs> Marcella Acosta. I'm a parent to a second grader at Anna Haas Elementary and I truly believe this COVID-19 vaccine is not for everyone. Please stand with us and help, help us fight for our rights and oppose this state mandate uh, for our children. No one really knows the long-term effects of these vaccines. According to the CDC, only 897 children have died from COVID-19. Every life loss is precious, but not everyone has an underlying condition that compromises their health, especially our young children. According to the Vaccine Adverse rec uh, Recording System, many have had adverse side effects due to this vaccine. Why would we put our kids at risk knowing their chances of catching and dying of for, for um, COVID-19 are very low? According to the CDC, they are at risk of dying from the flu. Now we have a, have, now we are finally back to in-person learning. I would hate to have to pull my child out of school to homeschool just because of this vaccine. I feel that instead of taking steps forward towards a solution, we are taking so many more steps back. We are already so broken because of so many business, businesses loss, unemployment, deaths, etc. This virus has taken so much from us. This is just one more thing that's trying to tear us down. It's mind blowing. We need to advocate against our uh, advocate against our freedom of choice, especially for our children. We are the voice and it needs to be heard. My child, my choice, and we as parents know what's best for them. Thank you for your support, Marcella Acosta. Thank you. Okay, Melissa Jenkins. Hi, good evening. My name is Melissa Jenkins. I would like to ask the board to please pass the resolution to oppose the state mandate, vaccine mandate and have a stand with us parents as we're asking for simply just a choice. Thank you for your time. Thank you. This next comment is from Kaylin Carpenter. Good evening, board members. Please stand up to the state and stand with us parents to oppose this mandate. Kaylin Carpenter, mother of two in Beaumont Unified School District. Thank you. <laughs> Alicia Benson. Good evening. I am the mother of a first grade student at Starley Elementary School. I am here to address my frustration and inconsistency with the school and district regarding their COVID protocols. Parents are being told all elementary schools in the district are closed campuses, and parents are not allowed on campus during school hours due to COVID. Therefore, they cannot attend their child's school performances or award assemblies. However, parents and siblings were able to go on campus for back to school night and go into classrooms, mask not enforced. We were encouraged to attend the trunk or treat at Starley Elementary that was held on campus. When I attended with my family and in-laws, masks were not enforced. There was no social distancing and we were crowded shoulder to shoulder, confined to a relatively small area on the school's blacktop. Parent teacher conferences are also being held on campus in the classrooms. Yet I cannot attend my child's first school performance or be present to see him receive an academic achievement award. I had to ask my child's teacher where his outside performance would be held and at what time so I could try and watch from a distance in the school parking lot. At least one other elementary school in the district is allowing parents to attend their school assembly as it will be held at staggered times and outside. I do not understand why this cannot be an option for all elementary schools within the district. As of November 5th, 2021, the positive case rate for students and staff in the district is 0.14%. With such a low positive case rate, there should be no reason why the schools cannot make accommodations for assemblies and performances to be outside, weather permitting, so parents can attend. Parents are being robbed of the opportunity to be engaged with their child's school and support their child's academic success for COVID protocols that are hypocritical and don't make any sense. While the health and well-being of my child is at the highest concern, the school and district should not pick and choose what they will and will not allow parents to be involved in. Thank you. Thank you. This 
Next comment is from Juventina Veramontes. Good evening, BUSD board members. My name is Juventina Veramontes. I am a freshman and a seventh grader. I would like the board to pass the resolution to oppose the state vaccine mandate to our, for our children. Please stand up to the state and stand up with us parents. My child, my choice. Thank you. Next speaker is Council Member White. <laughs> Parent, Council Member. Thank you. Um, first of all, I'm here as a parent, not a council member. <laughs> I have a junior at the Beaumont uh, High School. And I want to thank the superintendent first for the information regarding the testing that, that taught me a lot. I wasn't aware of all of that, so I appreciate that. Um, I too would like to see the resolution on the next agenda. I think what parents want to see more, more than anything, obviously we want to see you pass the resolution, but we want to see where you stand. We want to see what your thoughts are on the res resolution. So I would like to, uh, again, suggest as everyone else has that you put that on the agenda for the next meeting and I too will stand up and support and defend your actions if you uh, stand up to protect our kids. Thank you. Thank you. This next comment is from Kim Costello. Are you ready to stand with us? We are tired of your $9 million excuses. It is time to send this resolution back to the state. Thank you. Okay, Elizabeth Bennett. Hello, I'm a retired public school teacher. I have worked in the Colton School District, Alvord, San Bernardino, and I come to tell you that the mandates are killing our society. We don't need masks, that's not scientific, there's no science behind that. Uh, the vaccines are not doing what they were supposed to do. People are still getting COVID even when they're vaccinated, so it doesn't make sense. In fact, uh, most of the people who have COVID or the Delta variant were fully vaccinated, so none of the mandates make sense. And I want us to go back to the biblical standards that we had at the founding of our country by the pilgrims who loved Jesus Christ and they worshiped God and the Bible, the God's word. And we need to get back to our biblical standards that we started out with. A lot of children are going back to uh, Christian schools, parochial schools, homeschooling because they are so unhappy in the public school. We need to go back to biblical values as far as sex education, which that you are proposing to do, starting with kindergartners, which is very perverted. I read it. It's not good. Critical race theory is killing a society. We're already damaged, and then the critical race theory judges everybody by their skin color or their race, and it's ridiculous. Uh, it makes everybody who's white the bad person, the monster. And that's not correct. I mean, we were fine a few years ago. I don't know what happened. Suddenly everybody is a racist and it's not true. You know, America is not a racist country and we need to get back to our biblical values. Thank you. Thank you. This next comment is from Alexand Alexandria Estrada. Hello, my name is Alexandria Estrada alongside my husband, Jeronimo, Jeronimo Estrada. Please pass the resolution to oppose the state vaccine mandate for our children. Please stand up to the state and stand with us parents. My children, my choice. Thank you. Okay, Brenda, is it Seely? Um, my name is Brenda Seeley, and I've uh, got a long list of titles here, local <laughs> grandmother, retired RN. 
Um, <clears throat> gonna bunny tail off of what old Elizabeth back there said. And uh, I had everything in my head what I was gonna say, but about the vaccine thing and all this other business going on with society. Um, one of my uh, mentors is uh, Judge Judy. And one of, the, <laughs> and one of the, she's one of the most, to me, reasonable. Uh, watching her, you don't see any racism in her. She's just very fair, no matter what color, what breed, whatever you are. She's just straight across the board. And one of the things she always says is, when she's talking, is if it doesn't make sense, then there's some untruth there. And that's what's going on in society right now. And that's why I, I see a lot or hear a lot of untruth. There's just so many variables in all the science and everything being in the medical field 30 years, so forth. <clears throat> when the virus first came out, I knew it was man-made because it wasn't tracking out like a virus, so forth. It's gone way down. We're not having the deaths. Yes, it was very fierce when it first came out. It's dying down. What I'm leading to is how long are we going to be wearing these masks? Are you going to wear them the rest of your life? Because the COVID is not going away, okay? It's minimizing in symptoms. And we're damaging mentally. We already got really mental health issues in society today. And we're just making it worse for these children. And I have a lot of generations and business people in this community. And we're ready to go homeschool because a lot of us retired educational grandmothers and everything. We're ready to set up with the local mothers. So we employ you, please, um, to get rid of this uh, mandate stuff, you know, just, we got a small community, a low risk, you know, more risk with vaccine injuries than the actual disease deaths. So that's all I can say. Thank you. Thank you. This next comment is from Mark Farrell. Hello, I'm grateful for the opportunity to address our school board and elected representatives. We placed you in a position of great power and trust in responsibly educating our children. I understand the need for a safe learning environment. I have one daughter currently attending school in BUSD and two other daughters I hope to send there one day. For the record, I support vaccinations for serious diseases that have already been mandated by legislative process, but there are some risks in everything. The COVID-19 risk to children is minimal compared to any other vaccine currently mandated. At some point, it becomes unreasonable to micromanage minimal risks, especially by executive decree and a far off capital. I understand BUSD board members have pressures on all sides regarding these issues, but I'm asking you to follow the science. In children 14 and younger, for example, mandating masks and vaccines for COVID-19, but not the flu is simply illogical. At some point, we submit to reasonable risk allowance to have a functional community. My daughter is in a dual immersion program where no one can observe mouths or even hear clearly. There is real damage that these mandates are doing. On top of considering the science, we must also consider the political science. There is risk to ceding this sort of power to the executive branch. If you cave on this issue for fear of political retribution from the state, we risk a far greater disease coming to our communities. Tyranny is a disease that a healthy republic must always have antibodies for. If BUSD works for Sacramento instead of Beaumont, it will ultimately lose support of parents, taxpayers, and voters. I appreciate your consideration, and please let me know if you will support the resolution opposing COVID-19 mask and vaccine mandates in schools. Sincerely, Mark Farrell. P.S. We rename our schools the French Laundry. I'm pretty sure Sacramento will accept our resolution and opposing <laughs> mandates without further issue. <laughs> <laughs> okay, this is going to be our last speaker on this topic um, as we're reaching our 30 minutes. So, Lauren Tonneson. Hello, I'm Lauren Thompson. I'm here today speaking on behalf of a large group of teachers and staff. Today, we gathered over 100 signatures from staff in support of the proposed resolution that we shared with you. As you are aware, there are many other districts in our state that have submitted the similar resolutions. We are asking you to support our staff and students in regards to our choice. To choice, thank you. Thank you. Okay. Moving on to our next, next topic, so Pam Bernard. Oops. 
Good evening, Superintendent Takesha and members of the board. My name is Pam Bernard, and I teach theater at San Gorgonio and at Beaumont High School. I'm gonna talk about class size. I've been teaching for 26 years, and I've been teaching theater for the last 10. This is my first year at Beaumont High School. I have two periods of theater with 59 students and 60 students. I share a room with another theater teacher. The room is an L shape with only one door and no windows. Most students sit on the floor. This arrangement is not very conducive for COVID or safe in the threat of fire or other emergency. I previously taught at Mountain View and San G where my class sizes were only about at 40. With smaller class size, there was more interaction and more assignments could be explored. With 60 per class, there is not enough space for students to work and not enough of me to give attention to each or guide them in the different things that we are doing. If I'm working with a group of five students, I still have to keep an eye on the other 55 with eyes in the back of my head. It's still not very possible. This is a performing class, and as such, class size should be limited, much like the guitar or piano classes, which are limited to 35. Please imagine the time that it's gonna take to perform as students embark on the five minute monologues that we have set up that are coming along times 60, which may take weeks. Counselors are aware of my class size. I offered to teach an additional class if they would break the 120 students into three classes of 40. The district doesn't wanna pay for an extra period if they can just continue to load my classes to 60. It's difficult to teach effectively with any degree of rigor when my classes are almost double the size of what they should be. At this point, I don't feel that there is any concern or support from the counselors or admin. I was looking forward to the opportunity of teaching theater and exposing students to the arts, especially those that might not have any prior knowledge. Instead, I find myself focusing on not teaching and not theater, but mostly on classroom management. Thank you. Thank you. This next comment is from Laura Jacobson. Good evening, my name is Laura Jacobson and I am a kindergarten teacher in the district. The last two years I have taught full day kinder with a class size of 24. This year I have an AM PM kinder. Last week I got two new students which brings my class total to 27. I can have up to 32. I have all 27 five year olds for just over an hour during overlap time. In that time, I mainly do whole group activities because I, not, I cannot get to each student to help them individually on classwork. If our district wants to get all students reading by third grade, they need to invest in small class sizes, especially during the early years. T can, kindergarten is where we are teaching foundational skills, letters and sound, phonics, awareness, to name a few. Along with foundational skills, we are incorporating social emotional learning activities role playing and circle time and purposeful play time. Every Wednesday when I have all students there for an, the entire time, we do not do those activities because they cannot handle sitting and focusing quietly while everyone takes a turn. They are five. Having a smaller class would allow me to do these much needed activities every day and give me more time to get to know my students' needs by interaction instead of a computer test that may or may not be valid. Thank you. Laura Jacobson, kindergarten teacher, Tournament Hills Elementary. Thank you. Okay, Cesar Lopez. That's you. Good evening, everybody. Nice to see you. Thank you so much for giving me a two minutes, and it's kind of scary to be staring at a clock the whole time. Uh, but uh, I just want to say, um, you know, class size is important. And as we, and most of us here are educators, and have you, you've been on the board for a while, and I'm sure you've been presented with plenty of data showing that classes students do better, period, when they have smaller class smaller class sizes. Um, but I want to speak to something else besides academic achievement, and that is one of the things that we're focusing on this year, especially after COVID, is well, being back in person, social emotional learning. Uh, it's, it's a difficult thing to have a class size of 40. Uh, I'm at the high school. Uh, when, and, and trying to connect with 40 kids, much less getting them the academics that they need, but connecting with them and replugging them back into just being humans, right? Just existing in school. Um, I had the pleasure of, uh, I'm an EF tour operator, I had the pleasure of meeting a bunch of educators uh, in Rome, which was fantastic, go to Rome if you haven't been, 
Uh, but these were teachers from all across the United States. And I got to hang out with a lot of people from Oklahoma, of all places, who had class sizes of 30. And I was just floored at the amount of uh, personal relationships that they formed with these kids. Again, just 10, just 10 less than I had. And uh, they were sh- talking about all of the different opportunities they had to really, really connect with their kids. Um, so we're asking, BTA is asking you guys tonight, to please uh, empower the negotiation team uh, as we start to talk about class size to really think about those numbers and think about uh, what's really best for kids all the way around. Thank you so much. Thank you. This is from Corey Sinsky. <clears throat> Hello, board members. We need, a ca- cap cla- we need a cap to class sizes. I have students who do not have a desk of their own in my first period. They have to sit at a table in the corner of the room, which is very hard for them to see the notes when I lecture. The years that I have had a reasonable amount of students in my room, everything in class runs so much smoother. I don't feel uh, crowded. I don't feel overwhelmed. Teaching is more, much more efficient. I can help students one-on-one much more when I have a reasonable class size. It is a disservice to the students to not have class, a class size cap. I'm also sorry you have to be yelled at with anti-science misinformation every other Tuesday night. That must suck. Have a good night. <laughs> Corey Sinsky. Chase Moore. Good evening, board members, Superintendent Kakij, cabinet colleagues, community. Uh, The Beaumont Teachers Association is here tonight to advocate for class and caseload size limits. Uh, Although we do believe our board and our district leadership have a commitment to providing every student with a quality education, we also believe that putting those commitments in writing is important. For us, that means enforceable contract language. Beaumont is currently an exception when it comes to class and caseload size language in our contract. Almost all districts have something in this area negotiating regarding class size, including Redlands, Yucaipa, Moreno Valley, Banning, Palm Springs, Hemet, Riverside, Albert, San Bernardino, Colton, Corona, Norco, Rim of the World, and many, many more. Having class and caseload size r- limits in writings helps class from creeping up year after year as we make one exception after another. It sets a standard that can be adjusted in future years if it's not working, and it sends an important message to our community that we are committed to providing individual attention for each child. We do not believe that class size is a magic solution to increasing student achievement. However, we do believe that it is a tangible policy that can set a strong foundation for continuing our other strong academic programs. It is also beneficial for the teacher or case carrier of the student who will be able to work in a safer environment, can be expected to spend more time with each student and more, inf- uh, and more effectively implement instructional programs. A happy teacher is one that is more likely to stay with us long term and not go to a di- district with more favorable class size language. We urge the board to direct their negotiations team to work with us to create meaningful class size language that can benefit both students and teachers and make Beaumont an even better place to work and to learn. Thank you. Thank you. This next message is from D Thinks Patty. I am unable to attend tonight's board meeting. However, I am watching it live via YouTube. I am writing to show my support for BTA regarding special education case limits. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Is it Natalie, Charles, Bibbits? Sure, I probably got that all wrong. <laughs> Good evening, cabinet members and superintendent, Dr. Kakish. Thank you for allowing me to speak with you this evening. I am employed full time with the Beaumont Unified School District as a speech language pathologist. I come here in that capacity as well as I am a community member. Both of my daughters graduated from Beaumont Unified and they received an outstanding education, well prepared them for their future. And, uh, but tonight I wanted to share with you, I understand that we're a rapidly growing district and we have a shared commitment in providing a high quality education for all of our students. The issue at hand is truly a workload issue for speech language pathologists. And with that, we know that we haven't fully, up until this point, 
fully described to you and provided the real workload numbers that describe and delineate what we're truly responsible for. So moving forward, we are going to use the American Speech Language Hearing Association workload calculator to provide those, the real data. So then in turn, we can have a business-minded discussion on our caseload numbers as well as all the many factors that we're responsible in completing. The workload does require us to work for free, hundreds of hours. Again, we'll provide that data because we do have a shared commitment and excellence for all of our students. And thank you, and moving forward, you can anticipate the real data that our speech language pathology group will provide to you, which will then be a springboard for collaborative discussions with everyone, all stakeholders. Thank you. Thank you. Do you have any more? Okay. Hannah, I can't read your last name. Thank you. <laughs> Good evening. My name is Hannah McAnesby. I teach fourth grade at Summer Wind Trails. I had a little speech planned uh, with facts and figures and a few feelings. Um, but on my way to work this morning, I realized there was something missing from that speech, and it was the voice of my children. So I decided to tell them this morning that I was coming here to speak about smaller class sizes, and I wanted to know what they thought. So I posed two questions to them, and these were their responses. I didn't edit these. Because it is less noisy, easier for the teacher to see, better for the children who get claustrophobic, it will be more quiet. I think we should keep the class sizes we have because if there is a little amount of people, there would be more room for activities and other fun stuff. I think smaller classes would benefit me because smaller classrooms would mean less people and less people would mean less risk of getting sick. I also think that smaller classrooms would help others learn easier. What I think about a class size is that there should be an average. So for preschool, kindergarten, and third grade and under, I think there should be 25 or less. And for fourth grade and above, there should be 25 to 30 students. Because it is easier to teach the class. It is easier to teach. I think that a smaller class will benefit everyone because it will be easier on the teachers. I don't think we should move kids to other classes because kids are already happy here and people will be sad when their classmates leave. I think that a smaller class and less kids would benefit a lot of people because the teacher could pay more attention to the students and parents would be happier knowing their kids are getting enough help. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, that's all of our public comments we have for tonight. So we are gonna take a five minute recess.
Everybody ready? Are we still in? We good? Did we get kicked out? Okay. All right. Okay. Moving on. We're reconvening. Okay. I uh, need a motion on consent agenda items 9.2 through 9.12. Or do we have anyone wishing to pull an item? I forgot to ask. Sorry. I'd like to pull 9.4. Okay. Any others to be pulled? Steve? I move, uh, I move approval of the uh, consent agenda with the exception of 9.4. Okay, call for the motion. I mean, call for the, <laughs> call for the vote. I just got all confused. Okay, motion carries four with one absent. Yeah, I, I do have uh, I prove it, uh, uh, a comment. Um, item 9.6 in, in the purchase orders. Um, I see that um, we're continuing to fund uh, the school resource officer from supplemental and concentration funds. Um, we had this conversation before and uh, the administration said that we would look at other ways of making sure that we could provide that funding. So I'm still looking forward to seeing uh, some other use of supplemental and concentration funds other than for um, a program that I fully support. And the second um, is a question about, um, we're spending uh, six figures on Domino's Pizza. Um, I guess sort of two questions. One is, are we getting any of that free stuff, those free lava cakes? Um, <laughs> um, but the other part is, is that done through a bidding process? Um, is that a corporate agreement or is that a local dominoes? The reason for asking the question is whether we're giving ample opportunity uh, to other providers within the Beaumont Unified uh, area uh, to be able to bid for that lucrative uh, contract. Yes, actually we're on a piggyback bid on that, um, but it is through the local uh, dominoes store. It's actually out of Banning. Uh, the Beaumont um, facility could not um, assist us with the volume that we have, but we've been uh, using that Beaumont store um, for nine years that I'm aware of for our Domino's Pizza. The Banning store? I'm sorry, Banning okay, store. Yeah, yes. Okay. All right. But are, are there any other pizza providers who could meet our needs that are within our district? Um, well, it, not with the formulation of the whole grain crust and the requirements that the USDA puts on us for the pizza. It is uh, low fat cheese, low sodium pepperoni, and whole grain crust. It's not your regular pizza that you get from Domino's. It's a special formulation at the, at the volume that we use. We do nearly 60 pizzas a day at um, Beaumont High School alone. Yeah. We're I'll just We've not I'll ever had anyone come in to bid. When we put out to bid for it, mm -hmm. we have no takers. Okay, but it is a bidding process. It absolutely is. Okay. All right. I, I don't think I want that formula, but that's okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Thank you. Appreciate You're welcome. Uh, okay. Um, okay, that passed. So now we're going on to item 9.4. Mr. Mitchell, what would you like to pull? Yes, on the ASP security services. Um, to the, what is the background for us hiring a private security firm to provide those services at Beaumont High School? No way. Sorry about this. Um, we have several vacancies in campus security positions and for, the, for just increasing the assurance for safety. We've received several phone calls from parents, from staff um, regarding the vacancies, even though we had staffed lunches and before and after school with some of our district office staff, that was not uh, giving them a lot of security as far as assurance for safety. Um, and so we have contracted until the positions are filled. We have um, shared that with our CSCA leadership, our classified uh, union, and they understand the need 
uh, one main factor is really manning the facilities, um, restrooms, and the areas that our admin staff cannot get to and stay the whole, t the whole lunch. So we were able to open additional restrooms because we had more staff to man the restrooms um, through the private security. Um, but HR is actively seeking to fill those vacancies and they're open. I think um, maybe Jennifer can shed some lights on where we're at with that recruitment if you're interested. In the future, not right now, as far as uh, positions, I would be interested in knowing where okay. we are in hiring. Okay. Um, specifically about this company, so uh, Mr. Hovey often mentions about bidding, as we just heard. Uh, what, it, what was the process with getting this company? So actually, there is not many choices out there. Right now, many of our security companies that we've tried to contract with don't have the capacity, and they just said, simply no, we don't have the capacity. This is the only one that had additional staff, and there was three, and one of them is the owner of the company. And so we, we basically went with the only available company out there right now with staffing that they can spare for our high school. Who do they report to? Um, that detail I think maybe Penny can shed some light on, please. So we worked with maintenance and operations as well, putting together a plan to help with security, but with, they report to the high school administration for their responsibilities in the areas they work at along in collaboration with their current staff that's there at the site. Um, the contract says they won't be armed. Um, the website for the company says that the security officers are equipped with our own digital radios, flashlights, handcuffs, pepper spray, and digital body cameras. Will they have handcuffs, pepper spray, and body cams at Beaumont High School? No. We followed up with them that they would not bring that to school with them here at Beaumont High School. Okay. And um, what the security patrol car that's mentioned in there, is there a reason, is, are we having issues in the parking lot? What is the purpose of the patrol car? It's an option available to us if we needed to have out security on the outsides in the parking lots or anything like that. So at the time when we were looking at staffing, where would we need it? It's an option for us to use. At this time, they are on campus, in campus, working lunches, before school, after school, those types of things. Wouldn't it be bad for them to be down by right over here after school? If we had more ability for more staff to help support, then that's an option, but it's open for the next two months, so. Okay. Um, and Ms. Kakishi mentioned about perception about safety. And um, with a large high school, often there, there are incidents with teenagers, uh, somewhat of a given. But uh, what steps is Be Beaumont High School taking um, to address those concerns and behaviors beyond just a presence of security? Um, several, actually, and maybe I can refer to Dr. Brown for some of the things that took place at least in the last three weeks since at le the incident started to increase. <laughs> Sorry. Um, yes, yeah, so we've actually implemented a few different things to build um, a positive culture on campus. So they've been doing lunchtime games, music, competitions. We also have um, Kicks for Learning that uh, has started um, that is going up there to do intramural sports at lunch. We have four coaches that are um, working that. And then um, just trying to be creative in ways to um, give students other things to do that are more productive uh, and, um, and build the uh, campus culture that way. Any, any other questions? To the gate that says you could be videotaped for protection for themselves or anybody else. If, if we do have them, we won't be able to use them for any uh, legal, because we would need to have permission ahead of time from our students to even use it. 
So it, you can't even use it in court, even if you wanted to. So, Got um, it. No, I understand. I don't mean it like in that sense, but I mean it as a protection for the person. If someone claims that they've done something, it states when you drive through our gates that you could be on camera because we have video cameras up. If there's a question that someone says that they did something versus not doing something or something was done to them, in a sense of security or safety, if they had body camera, what's the difference of the body camera vers versus the cameras up mm -hmm. on campus? Um, we can give a lot more information if you'd like as in a follow-up, because um, I'd like to do some research about that. One thing that I know for sure we would have to go through is protocols with our CSCA staff, um, just because they're not going to be on camera just with students, they'll be staff too. So we will we'll give you a, a follow-up update on this. Okay. I, and I'm not saying I'm for it, I'm just saying what's the problem with it? I'm not saying I'm for it, I'm not saying against it, I'm just saying I, that, you know. Yeah, I, I think it's a fair question to ask and to look at uh, how it would be used. I would think if I was a contracted security person, um, I would want uh, the camera to uh, protect me against false accusations um, as opposed to um, you know, having evidence to use against students. Mm -hmm. um, just, I just think it's worth asking those questions about uh, the utility and how it would be used and what would be required if uh, that was the decision to use uh, the body cameras. All right, well then I need a motion to um, approve item 9.4. I'll, I'll move. I'll second. Okay, we'll do um, uh, just all in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay, motion carries, four with one absent. Thank you very much. Okay, moving on to 11. Special legal and discussion items 11.1 .1, review the district calendar for the months of November and December All right while the ca while the calendar is coming up on the screen. I just want to um, highlight that This is the only board meeting that we have this month we will have um, elementary parent teacher conferences all next week and the week of 22nd to the 26th, we will have non-student non days. And again, another commercial for Annie for the next weekend. Um, I know I'm gonna attend Friday night. Um, between that and maybe the second half of the game on Friday night, so. Yeah. Um, yeah. I encourage everybody to at least see one show. Yeah, you're, you're not going to get to the game. <laughs> uh, Annie, uh, the game the, starts late, too. Is it 7 o'clock? Yeah, oh, yeah, and this is Yeah, seven yeah well, um, it goes on I, like you, you, you might be able to see the crowd leaving uh, the stadium. <laughs> um, I believe, I think it was 9.30 when it got out. And anyway, um, when you mentioned the football game, and we congratulate the Beaumont High School a football team for winning their first round, uh, and they had to beat those Tigers from uh, San Jacinto. Um, and uh, it's been a number of years since uh, our team has beat them. So congratulations to the high school as they make it to the quarterfinals on on Friday night. Yeah, and be there for the game if you if you have the time. Okay, moving on to item 11.2. Select Tuesday, December 14th, 2021 at 6 p.m. in the Educational Facility Boardroom as the day, date, time, and location of the annual organizational meeting with the Board of Trustees of the Beaumont Unified School District. So just a question, Madam President. If we don't do that, that would mean that the same officers would uh, continue uh, for infinity? No. Good try. No. <laughs> this is my last one. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, that's funny. I, I move approval of the stupid date. <laughs> All second. Okay. Any discussion? Call for the vote. Motion carries. Four with one absent. Okay, moving on to business services. Item 12.1. Receive updated information on facility projects. Mrs. Hendricks.
Good evening, President Lara, board members, Superintendent Kakish, cabinet colleagues and guests. Um, this evening, we're just gonna talk a little bit about our project. So the Beaumont High School expansion project um, continues to move forward. As you can see on the image of the to the right, I wanted to show you guys the track that will um, just completely encircle the field area. So the green highlighted shows the entire track. And if you look at where the yellow star, star is, you'll see the corresponding yellow picture. I took that picture right from that area. And then the blue stars correspond together where I took the picture of the blue just to see how that's progressing. Um, do, what, do you know what the measured distance is for one lap? I do not, but I will report that back to you. Thank you. That's what I didn't know. I think it's a that. mile and a quarter, but I'll have to verify that for sure. Um, <clears throat> this image shows the fields between the, the field area between the softball practice fields and the baseball practice fields that'll be completed later. And that area is getting was getting prepared for sod and the sod um, was installed this week. So if you look as you drive by, you'll be able to see down, you'll see more sod on that area. Um, the building is almost complete. The furniture is anticipated to be received next month. Uh, concrete bollards were added around the new fire protection equipment to ensure that it stays safe. Um, the pedestrian sidewalk between the parking lot and the visitor's staff parking lot was poured. And then in these images, the image to the left is just a quick glimpse of the first floor hallway. Um, and then on the rest of the pictures, I wanted just to point out that the design calls for operable nano doors throughout the project. Um, they will be installed uh, between the tech and the labs and in the classrooms, allowing students to go out to the collaboration areas. Um, due to COVID, there's been some delays in those materials. So as a temporary fix, the contractor provided fixed windows in areas where those collaboration, where those nano walls will be. And we're going to have them come back and install those operable walls over summer break so that we don't have a, a impact to the students. Then um, the project also includes the installation of what they call an Aluka bond panel along the exterior corridor. So that's um, on the picture to the right, you can see that, that panel. Um, that is another product that's been held up at the port. Um, I did receive good news today that it'll be in by the end of the month and it should be installed by the middle of December. So just in time for our project to move forward and really um, hope that the board enjoyed the tour last week. And I just wanted to point out because we did notice that we just had caution tape that they did go back and put up that safety line all along those stairwells um, and that railing just to be sure that it was safe. And that concludes the presentation for tonight. Any questions? No, but thank you for arranging the tour. It's, it's a beautiful project and uh, it's very exciting. Uh, from the, the tennis courts to the uh, playing fields um, and the classrooms, it, it's exciting. Yes, thank it you. is. I'm amazing. excited too. Thank it's you. Amazing. Yeah, that was a nice tour. Yeah, thank you so much. Okay, moving on. 12.2. Uh, approved facilities contractor agreements for services being provided by the provided for the Beaumont High School Expansion Project Building 2, street improvements and auxiliary structures with several contractors. So do we need to pull any of these contracts? Anybody? No, I move approval of the, of the contracts for the Beaumont High School Expansion. Okay. Second. Any discussion? Okay, call for the vote. Motion carries four with one absent. Okay, item 12.3. We have a speaker on 12.3, so we'll take uh, Sonia first. And then we'll. All right, good evening, everybody. Um, so it's my understanding that item 12.3, um, you'll be discussing um, a grant provided by CDPH um, for um, epidemiology and laboratory um, capacity. I did um, read over some of the documents and it looks like it'll be paying for some vendors for testing um, for COVID response, which is wonderful. Um, I know that I've been um, speaking to you here and many of the administrators about rapid testing and I did hear your message, Ms. Kakish, at the beginning of today's meeting. 
Um, we did start a petition locally where um, we got over 100 signatures in less than a week with many community members who also support rapid testing in our community. Um, we continue to really um, encourage the school board to consider this for Beaumont. We do think it is important. We understand that PCR testing is available, which is wonderful. Uh, but some of the things that I have um, brought up is, uh, there's several different factors, right? We know that rapid testing is not necessarily um, something that they consider, um, as you mentioned, Ms. Kakish, our UHS wouldn't consider that as effective as PCR. Um, but I feel like it's an additional, and many other people in our community feel like it's one additional tool, one extra layer of screening that you could offer this community. Um, I went to get my kids, kids tested recently because they were um, in close contact at the Boys and Girls Club. And um, I did have a chance to talk to a community member there who was also testing her family. And she had like a family of five. And she's like, I was trying to get like rapid tests and she had to pay for the rapid tests for her whole family because her child did test. So she was like, I want an immediate response so I can decide, do I take my child to school the next day? Do I go to work? Do I stay? And follow that up with an additional PCR or follow that up with another rapid test, which is what um, CDPH usually recommends. You don't do one, but you do more than one. Um, you know, and I've also spoken to many of you that it's, sometimes it's not that easy to come by here in Beaumont. So Beaumont is an interesting town where we are geographically because we have, you know, adjoining cities. But sometimes even in our community, it's not that easy to find one rapid test, two or three, or if you have a larger family. So we just feel like it's one additional layer. Um, I do think it's a great response that in less than a week, we were able to get over 100 signatures. Um, that was not an easy feat. We know that we couldn't be on school grounds um, doing a petition, but yet it is disheartening to come to a school board meeting and see a table outside with the petition for school choice when we're being told we can't do that on, on campus. And we respected that 100%. We used other tools and other measures to try mm -hmm. to reach out to the community. One other thing, um, we did have a conversation with Mr. Brown recently, and we talked about several factors um, directly and indirectly tied to rapid testing. So one of the things that we did bring up a concern is um, co um, contact tracing. So we know um, we do get some contact tracing notices, right, when we've been in, our child has been in close contact with somebody who's tested positive. Um, one thing that I want to make the board aware is that I received a, a notice from for a close contact case that was not my child. I saw the name of a student and the name of their parents and got information for a child and a person that was not my child. So um, in terms of HIPAA and um, getting um, information there that's personal for another student that's not mine, I think that's something that you really need to look into. I did let the nurse know this is not my student and then she responded with my student's, um, my child's information. Um, one other thing is with contact tracing, we really stress the importance of knowing the last date of contact that our, our child had. So if I'm getting a, a close contact letter on a Wednesday, what was the last date that, that that student was in class with my child? So that I can kind of gauge, do I need a rapid test? Do I not need a rapid test? Do I need a PCR test? That's important information that we really um, should have on hand. So um, those, are those are just the items that we have. Um, we want to continue to advocate. Um, many parents didn't come with me here today because we just feel that these board meetings have become kind of a hostile environment now with no masking and then rallies and now petitions outside of the door. So um, we hope that you can consider our request. Thank you. Thank you. Um, excuse me, you, uh, you said there was a table for petition signing. Is that on the, the district? property it was right outside the front door and this yeah. is the second time because i did see a picture we weren't here last time but i did see a picture that they were there last time also i would have been welcome to come and take okay. the test we thank you mr heaven okay it was addressed before the board meeting by miss hendricks and and she spoke to the individuals and asked them to take the table down and gave them the protocol and what needs to happen and gave them some resources to reach out to. So it was addressed this evening when it was uh, made aware by staff. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, well this item 12.3 is to ratify grant award number 168 from the California Department of Public Health for the Emerging Infections Epidemiology and Laboratory Capacity Reopening Schools Grant for the 2021-22 fiscal year. 
I move that we ratify the grant award number 168. I'll second. Any discussion? Okay, call for the vote. Okay, motion carries four with one absent. Okay, moving on to our reports. Do we have anybody from CSEA tonight? Okay, and BTA, no BTA. Okay, Bowman Administrator's Confidential Management. Good evening, Board President Laura, Board Members, Superintendent Pekish, Cabinet, community, and distinguished guests, if you remember that. Uh, we would like to thank all of our uh, veterans for their service coming up um, on Thursday, especially those who have served from the Beaumont Unified School District and chose to work in the education field or support. Also, this is our last board meeting before we leave for Thanksgiving um, break, and so many of our schools are working with our students on thankful activities. So I'd like to give a few reasons why we are thankful, because that's always important. We are thankful that the kids are back in school. We are thankful that we are continuing on with sports and trips for the students. That we are able to continue with our arts, such as the Annie production. And we are thankful for our teachers and our support staff across the district. Um, I also want to um, like for everyone to keep a lot of our Beaumont Unified staff in their thoughts. Um, some are struggling with their personal health and the personal health of their family members uh, during throughout the holidays. So that's it. Thank, Thank you. you. Okay, and you're thankful for also for your colleagues in leadership, correct? I think you left them out. I think you said certificated and support. Yeah. Um, for our teachers and support staff. There you go. Mr. Mitchell, you're up. <laughs> uh, uh, I want to just say I appreciate the courage of uh, the public, members of our community who come here and speak, whether I agree with them or not, that's besides the point. I think um, it is difficult to come up and, and come to the podium and talk. And uh, we need to hear what they're thinking. Uh, it's, we want them to feel safe also. So uh, I prefer to see them in person and um, not on social media and taking the shots. It's very easy to take uh, shots at people on social media. And it's a little bit more difficult when you're looking someone in the eye and making a, a relationship with them. So I do appreciate those that come and speak to the board. Uh, Ms. Spitler uh, said about Veterans Day and um, Thursday is Veterans Day and we have a parade in town. And I, I mentioned it a couple times just because not only do I really appreciate the um, what our veterans have done for us uh, and our country, but because I'm happy that our students are participating. I think it's important, and, and our community is coming out again for this parade. Uh, that's important. It, it, it shows our communities coming back and getting out of their homes, and maybe kids are getting away from their video games and TV. And so I just really think it's important, and we need to support them. And I'm happy that our junior ROTC is leading the way uh, in that parade and our bands are going to be participating. So thank you and have a great Thanksgiving, everyone. Thank you. Okay, Mr. Harvey. Um, well, I've already mentioned Annie and the football game. Um, so I'll just uh, piggyback and uh, wanna honor uh, our veterans and the families of our veterans uh, on Thursday. Um, and uh, all of us uh, to take a break at Thanksgiving and, and ponder those things for which we are thankful. Uh, and uh, I will um, say see you in December. Thank you. Mrs. Poulter. Um, I'd like to uh, thank everybody who has been emailing me and, um, and um, letting me know thoughts on what they're they're feeling regarding all this. I know a lot, a lot, some people come to the board meeting, some people email us, and um, I am, uh, I like to hear what people have to say or their views. 
um, and not everyone's comfortable coming here. So if anyone else would like to remember that we can be emailed and, and let us know if you, for, for any reason, do not feel like you want to be coming to a school board me uh, meeting, that that's always an option. Um, I also wanted to check on um, the caseloads for the speech therapist, if we could get a report on what they are and what the state um, requirements are. I know they didn't state what those were, so I don't know. I don't know what the state requirements are. I don't know what their caseloads are. Um, but then I will <laughs> if we can find out. Um, I also wanted to piggyback on I was unable to go to the play, and I probably will not be able to go to the play because of everything going on personally with me. Um, but I know that they're always incredible productions. I have gone to a, uh, quite a few, and I've taken people from outside this area, and they're just always amazed and tell me, tell me when the next one is, because they just, they are incredible performances, and our students are really um, outstanding. And, um, I liked the idea that uh, of the staggered assemblies and having them outside whenever possible um, so that people can be involved again. Um, I know now the weather's gonna be getting perhaps, but it, if the chance is to having, having an assembly where it's staggered and people are fo following the protocols and so that they can be involved and be there at the school, I like that. Um, and that was a good suggestion by one of our parents. And um, I just would like to thank everyone for their hard work. This is uh, not an easy time period. Um, every time we come to a meeting and every week there's new situations and, and things that are coming on. So I appreciate all of the employees in all aspects of our, of our um, district. And um, I also appreciate the, all our veterans and our current servicemen who are doing the things that I cannot do. And I'm appreciative of them because it is just something I could not do. So I'd like to end. Thank you. Thank you very much. Okay. All right. Now I'm going to read my comments because um, I had a lot. So okay. So this Thanksgiving is right around the corner, and I thought I would make my comments tonight about what I am thankful for um, as a school board member. I am thankful for our families and our community. I love Beaumont. Our leadership team who keeps us moving forward. Our instructional staff who provide quality education every day. Our business staff who keeps us fiscally sound. HR, it involves people, so it's a challenge and then they take that on well. Uh, CNS, it involves food. That's always good. So thank you for providing quality meals for all of our students. MNO, thank you for our beautiful campuses and maintaining them. Transportation, thank you for transporting our students safely. Uh, instructional support services, and thankful for all the support they give to all of our sites for quality instruction. For facilities, thankful for the dedication to ensure quality campuses and future planning. For IT, thankful they keep us online. <laughs> I'm also thankful for my fellow board members with whom I am blessed to serve with. So I'm sure I missed someone, but please know that it was unintentional, and I am truly thankful for this district and everyone who serves our students. Carol and I will um, end with a quote from William Arthur Ward. Gratitude can transform common days into thanksgivings, turn routine jobs into joy, and change ordinary opportunities into blessings. So I hope we can all count our blessings and to be full of thankfulness. Happy Thanksgiving and also happy Veterans Day to the men and women in the service. So we will adjourn this meeting at 741.